This game's called Dinosaur Prowl for grades 2 to 5. You're going to need a few dodgeballs and two scooters. So in this game, you'll start with your students spread out around the gym, and you're going to choose one student who will be the T-Rex, and they'll get a dodgeball. You're going to also choose another student who will be the Dilophosaurus, and they'll also get a dodgeball, but a different color. And you're going to choose two students to be Velociraptors, and they're going to work together. They always uh, stand either hand in hand or just working together uh, with a dodgeball each. And you're going to also choose two students who will be Triceratops, and they're going to sit on scooters. Now basically in this game, is a type of tag game where the uh, ones with dodgeballs are the taggers, but they do different actions to tag. So the T-Rex will go around and just try and tag students with the ball, so like the T-Rex biting them, and then if they're tagged, they have to freeze in place. Uh, the Dilophosaurus will throw the ball, and it's kind of like the spit coming out, the poison spit or whatever that those dinosaurs do, and try to throw the ball below the waist of a player to hit them to get them out. And the Raptors have to work together and tag uh, a player at the same time with their dodgeballs. So it's a little bit of a tougher job, and they, but they have to work together. Now, the uh, Triceratops, they've got to go and they will be freeing people as they're frozen in place. So anytime they see a dinosaur or a player that has been bit, they're going to go and free that person just by tagging them and then they're back in the game. Hey everyone, this is Shark Attack for grades 1 to 6. You won't need any equipment for this game. In Shark Attack, you'll have your students lined up on the side. They'll be the swimmers or the beach goers, whatever you want to call them, and you're going to choose some people to be the sharks in the middle. And the goal of the swimmers is to get across to the other side uh, without getting bit by the sharks. So the sharks will yell out Shark Attack, and that's a sign for the students to start running. And if a student gets tagged along the way, so we see two students got tagged, then they must sit down where they got tagged or bit, and uh, as the others make it to the other end, um, those students who are tagged will kind of put their arms out and uh, they're kind of waving their arms maybe like they're drowning or something you can you can do that if you want uh, and as students come back the other way they can try and save those swimmers so by giving them a high five as they run by so the, the students in the middle of the sharks will yell shark attack and the students will proceed the other way and so they're running and if someone saves one of the swimmers as we see in this case down here uh, high-fived then that swimmer is back in the game and can continue running back to the other side um, of course if anyone else is tagged along the way or bit by a shark then those players anyone who is bit by a shark has to sit down so it's a continuous game and there we see another student was saved so all those students will proceed to that side and the game will continue on so the sharks will yell shark attack and they'll go on back and forth so this way it eliminates any sitting around for a long time because every round students are saving students and new ones are getting bit and what, uh, whatever so Hope you enjoyed this game. This game called Hawks and Doves for grades 2 to 6. You'll need benches and cones, and thanks to Danny Uzanova for this game idea. To start, you'll place down cones in the corners, and those cones are going to make nests. And in one nest, you're going to have the doves. They're going to be the runners. And in the other nest, you're going to have one or two hawks, and they're going to be the taggers. And you'll place down a bench or a couple benches somewhere in the playing area, and that's going to be the cage. And the goal is for all of the doves to make their way to the other corner. Once the game's started, they're going to try and get all the doves into the nest from the hawks. But it's not going to be that easy, of course, because the hawks are going to come on out, and that's how the game starts. Once they leave their nest, the game starts, and if the, the doves are safe in their nest, and once the hawks have left their nest, they're not allowed to go into either of the nests, but the doves are safe when they get into the nest. But if they enter the playing area or the flying area, they can get tagged. If a dove gets tagged, then they must go into the cage or stand on the bench, and they're going to be stuck there until another one of their teammates, a different dove, can come and tag them, and then they're free, and they can leave the cage. Of course, if they get caught again, they have to go back up there. And the doves will be going whenever they want. They don't have to go all at the same time. They can go a few at a time, whenever they feel safe. You can make safe zones around, um, or, or no puppy guard rule if you'd like, but with only one or two hawks, uh, you might not need that. So we'll see one dove here has made it across and safe into that nest, where that's the goal area. Of course, that dove, if he'd want, he can leave that area to free somebody if somebody was stuck on the bench or so on and so forth, and play for a certain amount of time, or play until all the doves make it into the safe nest, or until all the doves are caught in, into the cage. Right, this game is called Predators and Prey, and it is for grades 1 to 6, and you don't need any equipment. And this is a great cross-curricular activity, and thanks goes to Richard Turin. He's a friend of mine who did some practice teaching in my school this year, and he brought this this idea, especially it was great with the grade 3-4s. They were working on life cycles and food chains and whatnot. So the first thing is you can start with conversations. It's a perfect way to bring it up and have examples of the different types of animals that are herbivores, car carnivores, etc. So we've chosen our bunny rabbits to be the herbivores, and they are going to be just running around. They're, they're the runners in this game. It is a tag type game. And then you have the omnivores. So we've chosen red foxes as the example. And those omnivores, you can give them a pool noodle if you want, or a penny or something to distinguish them. You don't have to, but you can. And then at the very top, you're going to have a carnivore who's also the tagger. He's the ultimate tagger. And the carnivore can go around and tag the foxes. So the wolf can catch the foxes and the bunnies. And the foxes can only catch the bunnies. And the bunnies have to just run and run away. And as a teacher, you're going to be the disaster. And we're going to explain that in a second here. So on the go signal, everyone's going to be moving around, running around. And uh, of course, the taggers are going to try and tag those uh, the others. So the foxes chase the, and tag the bunny. The bunny then has to go to the teacher and perform some sort of an exercise. We've chosen maybe a few push-ups. And then that bunny can go and return into the play. So same thing now. Uh, the wolf has gone and caught a fox. 
So of course the fox goes to the teacher, does the, the exercise that you determined, and then goes back into play, and, uh, and then that fox right away caught a bunny. So that's the way that the basis of the game works for a round, play for whatever uh, length you want. And then what happens is once uh, once the uh, bunny's finished doing the push-ups there, the teacher's going to yell out a type of disaster when the teacher wants to end the round. So forest fire in this case. So forest fire, and then that teacher is going to go a little bit crazy, turn into a fire, run around, swinging the arms around, chasing after people for a little bit just to symbolize that the forest fire is going to go and wipe out everything and such so is the danger of forest fires and uh, some other examples of, of disasters you could have flood you could have things like uh, wind or tornadoes um, you can have bacteria or or parasites that kind of stuff that, that wipes things out uh, you can have human impact of factories pollution so a lot of discussions you can have a lot of different fun activities also some examples I want to give just of predators and prey, uh, so shark to the seal to the fish, those are some examples. Of course kids have great the best examples, right, so go with that first, but cougar to a turkey to an insect, I know that picture is actually a lion, not a cougar, um, owl to mouse to a piece of cheese, and so, okay, well I guess the cheese isn't an animal, but uh, anyways, you can use your imagination and come up with your own. Thanks. The game starts off with the students lined up along the one edge of the gym, and you're going to pick one person to be a chef who's going to face those students. Okay, you could have two chefs if you wanted, um, that'll speed things up, uh, or depending on the group you're, you're with, you might want to just have two chefs. Okay. Uh, the goal of the game is the students along the edge of the wall, they're going to be pizza toppings, they're going to try and make it across the gym uh, to the other side safely without getting tagged or without getting caught by the chef. Okay. So before the game starts, you're going to have to determine which student is which topping. Uh, I like to go with three toppings and I get the suggestions from the students. In this case, uh, I've color coded them for clarity purpose. Uh, we've picked pepperoni, and mushroom, and cheese as our toppings. So you go down the line, pepperoni, mushroom, cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, cheese, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the chef needs to know these toppings and when everyone's ready, the chef's going to yell out a certain topic. So mushrooms been yelled out, all the mushrooms are going to take off down the, down the gym, trying to not get tagged, and they made it across. The chef then yells pepperoni, the pepperonis come across, and it looks like one got tagged. So if somebody gets tagged, they go to the, the side, and we call that the oven. So now there's pepperoni cooking in the oven. And last yells cheese, one of the cheese gets caught. Oh, it looks like another one gets caught, so now we have two cheese in the oven as well. So when a couple people get tagged, I like to, to, to walk towards the oven and just say something like, oh, I smell some, some pepperoni, I smell some cheese cooking in the oven. Just kind of, you know, get a smile on their face because no one likes to get tagged first. Um, the game continues on with uh, the chef calling out another topping and the kids running back to the other side trying to make it. You keep the game going uh, that way till everyone's caught or till you want to end it. And that's pizza tag. This game's called Pirates and Sailors. For grades 4 to 8, you're going to need mats and pool noodles. So to start, you'll place down the mats, as you see here. And the ones in the corners are going to be the sailor ships, so the basic ships. And the one in the middle is the pirate ship, and that's the prison area. So students will start off spread out around the gym, or they can start in the ships, in the sailor ships. So those are the sailors, and they're going to be running from ship to ship, trying not to get tagged by the pirates. So there are three pirates, and they'll have a pool noodle. So um, they'll go around and try and tag with the pool noodle nicely, so not slapping each other. And on the signal, they'll be going. And if somebody gets tagged, they've got to go into the prison, so into the pirate ship. So two players have gotten tagged, they're in there. Now if somebody can go and free them with, uh, without getting tagged, and then holding hands, if they can make it back to one of the sailor ships, then they're safe and back in the game. Um, so when students are in the ships, so if the sailors are in the ships, they're safe there and they can't get tagged, but they can only be in there for three seconds and then they've got to get out and go to a, a new ship or wherever. This game called Helicopters for kindergarten to grade six, you'll need 16 cones and pool noodles. So to start, you'll place down your cones and you'll have four different colors, four of each, and those are the helipads or the landing zones for the helicopters. And you're going to have two students who will start with pool noodles in the middle, they're the taggers, and the rest of the students will get to choose which helipad to start in, so it doesn't matter which color they want to choose to start. And basically as a teacher, you're going to give the students different directions, so you're going to call out, for example, green, fly to orange. So you, you yell that out, and then the students that are in green are going to try and fly safely to orange without getting tagged, and we see that those students have made it. And then you're going to call out another color, so purple, fly to green, we see that the purple students will then try and get across. And if a player gets tagged, like we see right there, one of the players gets tagged, they simply just return to the helipad that they were just at. And this game can go on and on like this, and uh, that's basically it for this idea. This game's called Mystery Tag for grades 2 to 8, and all you'll need are exercise mats, and thanks to Chris Barchuk for this game idea. So you'll start by placing down exercise mats, or those folding mats, uh, somewhere in the middle on their sides or their ends, so they're standing up. And you're going to have players line up along a line on one side, have a starting line, and on the other side have another line, a finish line, just like you would in British Bulldog or those types of tag games which go back and forth. And you'll have a tagger who is it to start. And to start the round, the tagger's going to yell, face the wall, so all the players will have to face the wall so they can't see. Meanwhile, that player will then go and hide behind one of the mats, counting down from five to zero. Once the countdown has been made, once that player is hidden and gotten to zero, then those players would run and try and get to the other side without getting caught. Now if players peek, they're automatically it. Or if they touch a mat, they're automatically it. Um, of course, and also if they get tagged, they're it. And any player who gets tagged goes to the middle and uh, helps the player who's it. So there's more and more as time goes on, as players go back and forth. And here's a very simple game called Everybody's It for grades 1 to 8, and you don't need any equipment. So here are your players in the playing area, and basically everybody's it, and everybody can also get tagged. So if a player can go around and tag somebody, the player who's tagged has to sit down. And they're stuck down there until the player who tagged them gets tagged. So a different student has come around and tagged that player. And so now that player is down, and 
the person who they tagged is back up. And if players tag each other at the same time, which can happen, uh, then have them do rock, paper, scissors to see who sits down. And uh, yeah, that's it for this idea. This game's called Wolf's Den for K-6, to and you shouldn't need any equipment for this one. Alright, so first you're going to set a middle area, and that's going to be the wolf's den. You can use the lines in the gym, or you can use cones, and you're going to put a student there as the wolf. And the remaining students will be on either side of the den, doesn't matter which side to start, and they are the rabbits. And the goal of the game is for the rabbits to go across that den, so they'll be going back and forth as many times as they can without getting caught by the wolf. So they can think about what time's best to go across, and so forth. Now what happens is, if a student does get caught, so a student has tried to make it through and they get caught, they become a wolf. And so that continues on, and as students get caught, there will be more and more wolves in the middle until everybody's caught and you'll start a new round.